All right, so if you're moving to Portland, Oregon, I am gonna do the deepest dive into Portland. You're gonna wanna get your notepads, your paper, your pens, because I am doing a full presentation on moving to Portland, Oregon. So what are we gonna cover today? We are gonna talk about the major roads and sections, and people, let me tell you, this determines where you live. Now, we've been able to help 200 plus clients move, relocate here, and find their dream home. And this right here, these major roads and sections are the biggest determination of where you're gonna live. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, live over here and just drive over here for work. Look, people, it's an old West Coast city with mountains, lakes, rivers, streams, lions, tigers, bears, oh my, it gets windy. So you really, really need to find the area first. And when I go through the map and show the different sections, the different roads, it's gonna help you. Next up, we're going to talk about those best areas to live in Portland, Oregon, right? I'll take niche.com, not allowed to steer in any way, but I will take their rankings. What I'll do is I'll pull it up on the map. I will go through each one of these areas and show you and, and kind of talk about these different areas. So why you would like it or maybe why you would hate living there, right? So that is also why we're going to get into the pros and cons. So while I'm in these areas, each and every one, I will talk about those pros and cons of living in Portland, of living in all these different cities. Again, when we've helped all these clients, we've done these Zoom calls, it really boils down to us just listening to you, right? What do you like? What do you not like? So I will take all those stories, all those references again, and this will help you to really narrow down your search and find the perfect spot. Then I have an entire heat map. So the last slide is all of these areas broken down into the most expensive and least expensive, giving you you know, an opportunity to look into some of those areas where you have the best bang for your buck. So I will break it down. It is color coded into different sections. You're not going to want to miss this, homie. So let's get going here. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is just pull up th the map of Portland, right? So we've obviously got our downtown area. And what I want to cover first is just our major arterial roads and sections, right? So if you look north to south, you have what is called I-5, right? So this freeway actually kind of darts over here and uh, heads straight north-south. So your major north up to Washington State, right? Major south, this goes down to Eugene, to sail. It just goes all the way down south, right? That is your I-5. Uh, if you are going to, I'll just stop you right there. If thinking about living in Van, you know, Vancouver, working in Portland or vice versa, this bridge right here, the I-5 across the Columbia River is atrocious. If you're hitting this at, you know, like a, a high traffic time, right? So in the mornings, the traffic coming down from Vancouver into Portland can be absolutely brutal. So we've done a video on that and stuck ourselves in traffic, but that is the one that you hear. Uh, I-5 a lot of times is gonna have a ton of traffic. Now you've got a couple different ones uh, for your east-west. The major one coming in from the west is I-26. This comes right through northwest Portland area here, and then it kind of dives down, right? So you're going to be going down this hill, winding, right, through the mountains, mount, you know, hills on both sides to get right into downtown. You're actually going to go through some tunnels and stuff to get into Portland here. 99, okay, anybody that's going to be living in Tigard, Sherwood, uh, any of these areas, there's Sherwood down here. This is going to be your major freeway, and this has gotten a lot busier as of uh, lately, too. Then you have the 84. So the 84 is right here. This is going to head out to uh, kind of the northeast Portland, and out of northeast Portland, it jogs up, and then boom, it's going to take you over to the Dowels, right? Another major highway, uh, the 205. So this is one that people who are going to end up moving to the east side they're gonna be leveraging. And you can see here, it kind of does this loop here. You've got the airport right in here. So if you're somebody who's traveling a lot, uh, as long as you don't really have to go during rush hour, if you can you know, plan your flights to maybe leave a little bit after, you know, even from the, the Beaverton areas, it's probably 30 minutes. You know, it takes me to get to the airport with no, no hardcore traffic. But you know, during the rush hour now, if you're going to be hitting some of these loops and these highways, that's where it can take you an hour. So, and real quick, if you haven't yet, this is the number one channel where we do all the videos. We even take the camera out to every city and suburb to do vlogs. 
If you would, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure right now that you subscribe so that you never miss any of our videos. This is the 217. And the reason that I'm showing all these is because now I'm gonna break it into sections and you're gonna know which roads to be close to. This 217 getting on to 26 or the 26 getting on to 217 in rush hour can be completely backed up right here. Uh, but these are gonna be your major roads to get in because you've got Shoals Ferry here, some of these roads that, that head in. A lot of these roads in here, even though the map doesn't show it once you get into this area, it's all up into the mountains and it's very narrow, skinny roads. So there's not a lot of ways that you can get into downtown Portland from really anything else other than these major arterial roads. You do have the benefit of taking uh, some of these roads. We just did a video actually on the Forest Heights area. Uh, they've got some back roads that will drop you into here, uh, which makes things nice. That is actually, you know, we've got a lot of new construction up in this area. It really puts you close when it comes to talking about, you know, downtown plus having everything on, on the west side. So when you look at it, you've got your major northeast, south, you know, west and east roads. That's what's going to get you to where, you know, you need to go. You all obviously have this one too, uh, the 26, which heads out to the east. So, so the only other road that I actually leverage quite a bit right here, this goes right along the river right here. So this can get you, a lot of our clients are moving to Lake Oswego or they're coming down south to West Lynn, even possibly Oregon City. And you can take this road right in here to uh, downtown Portland. It gets a little backed up right into this area here uh, as it kind of converges. And then you're down in South Portland by the medical complexes and a lot of stuff. So uh, you can get a little bit of traffic, but this is a very pretty drive into here. So with that, now I need to discuss the very important thing. And I had no idea what this was when I moved to Portland. See, Jesse, my partner on this channel as well, was calling me an idiot because I didn't know why this road was northwest and that road was northeast and that road was southeast because Portland's on a grid system. See, and when moving here, you don't know those things and all the locals take it for granted. But real quick, while I got your attention, if you would, would you leave me a comment down below? Where are you moving from right now? Super interested to hear. And if you are moving to Portland, what are some of the areas that you are looking at moving to? So go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let's see where everybody's coming from. I myself came from Idaho. So now here's actually one thing that nobody thinks about, but is super important, is you've actually got the river right here, right? The Columbia and it drops all the way down. And that is what separates east and west, all right? And now you have right here this street, if you've ever played Tony Hawk skateboard, the Burnside skate park, but the Burnside bridge uh, that goes over right here and it heads out here to the west as well. So now you've got this plus sign here. I didn't know this for like a, a year of living here, but now that you have it separated by the river and by Burnside, this section up here is Northeast Portland. This section down here, Southeast Portland, right? Then you got Northwest Portland, right? And you got, S dub, right? So a lot of these areas that you you know live over here, the Beavertons, the Tigers, and all this, this is really considered that whole Southwest Portland. And they added a fifth section. The funny thing is they call them quadrants still, and I got beat up for calling the five quadrants. So yes, you have South Portland now, and they actually changed the addresses about two years ago. So it really makes up South. This is again, right where the medical complex. So if you're moving here, you know, for the medical complex, for, uh, you know, nursing, whatever, a lot of them are, are, you know, right down here. There's a lot of action going on, but that's right down here on the river on the South end. So uh, you just want to understand, you know, when you move, you're going to get an address, which is Northeast street or Southeast or Northwest. And it all has to do with Burnside and the, the river right here. So now that I've gotten it broken down to Northeast, Southwest, I have to break down the Northeast, Southeast section of Portland, Oregon. Even if you're not gonna be living here, you gotta know these areas. It's one of the funnest places to be, but there is a lot of people looking to get, you know, to this east side of the river, Northeast, Southeast. So let me break down every, you know, different section of, uh, you know, the, the Northeast, Southeast right here. So if you notice, here is that burn side. It does a little jog right there. Uh, and heads out. Sorry, it doesn't do that jog there. That is your, your divider right there, right? So we've got north and south. And since we are east of the river, this is your northeast section. This is your southeast section. 
the most notorious sections of you know Portland, Oregon. The one thing you'll notice is every road perfectly northeast southwest. So it's very easy to figure out you know where you're going, um, except for two different areas, which I will talk about um, here in a second. But since you have the northeast southeast, I'll keep that line in there. That is what divides north to south. If you're looking um, for an area, I would say anytime you go up to the northern part here. Uh, you're going to have, a, it's going to cost a little bit more to live. Uh, the houses are, you know, a little nicer schools, all that stuff. Irvington is probably the most expensive in there. You can find these places, you know, with quarter acre, half acre, even one acre, like massive, massive, massive estates and homes. Uh, you'll find a lot of like the CEOs and, and, and people living in that Irvington area. Uh, it really puts you so close to all the shops, restaurants, bars of Lloyd. And then I didn't catch it. Here's, Bo here's the Beaumont Wilshire area. And if you go up just a couple streets, uh, here's Fremont, another popular street. Just right up to the north is Alberta Arts. So I would say probably uh, Alberta Arts is your most like, yeah, I want that Portlandia lifestyle. It's going to be up there. They do have the Alberta Arts Street Fair. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on up there, but it's highly desired. Beaumont Wilshire is actually an area where you'll stretch your budget the most and kind of get the benefit of this northeast southeast area and it's anytime i go through beaumont wilshire it's just even though you're next to those really cool eclectic shops and a lot of high-end restaurants and stuff um, independent restaurants shops bars it's very just like peaceful quiet uh more of like that you know 50s style homes so you're gonna see that and, and everything over in this area nothing's gonna be brand new. you will see some areas where they've torn houses down and gone super modern in fact right uh in here this is called sabin s-a-b-i-n um this was an area actually about three years ago we were doing videos in here and jesse's like you watch this is going to be the new hottest area because it's right in between Irvington, beaumont wilshire all these areas but you have all these two one three one houses that are like 200 something thousand 300 thousand investors are scooping these up like crazy and then boom it happened but you get the benefit of being on the border of Irvington, Beaumont, Wilshire, right next to Alberta. And then you have Fremont Street. You know, you have some of these I iconic streets that you can, uh, you know, be very, very close to. And again, anytime you're living up here, you're just a quick, you know, bike ride. You're going to see a lot of bike riding, public transportation, walking, whatever. So take the electric scooters and head down because, you know, you've got down here, you got your Hawthorns and, and some of your major, major roads, Richmond, Hawthorne. Here's Laurelhurst Park. You've probably seen it, you know, on the news or just anywhere how pretty that park is. Unfortunate what how you know, some of the camping that's going on around there, just to be brutally honest, but really cool part of town. So when you talk about northeast, your your main areas are Irvington, Sabin, Beaumont, Wilshire. You've got Alberta Arts just up to the north there. When you come to the south, I would say some of the top areas. Uh, anywhere, you know, along the Hawthorne, you got to get, you know, kind of past this area is what people really like. Hawthorne, um, one of my favorite areas in all of the Portland we love coming to is Mount Tabor Park. So this is like, all right, I want some nature. Uh, I want that. Uh, what am I looking for? What's like the 1950 style hall? I am just drawing a blank right now. Um, but <laughs> that is what you find there. And then you can head up into the park. This, I take the kids there all the time. We go here all of the time and we head up hiking. They give you little maps of the, all the different trees that are up there. There's dozens and dozens of different trees from all over the place. So it's really cool. And then you just pop right down. Boom. You're on Hawthorne. There is all the business. You've got Belmont street right here, even on the backside of Mount Tabor, is like this secret little area with coffee shops and stuff like nobody knows about. So super sneaky area, South Tabor, Mount Tabor, all this area here that you're right on all of the main uh, streets with all the action, right? So this is all your independent shops, restaurants, bars, your James Beard winning chefs, uh, all of that. That is going to be this, this area really focused in here. And then the true like Southeast Portland. A lot of these areas like Woodstock and then right here, this is Selwood Moreland. So you can see that the, this little highway right here divides it and it's on the east side of it. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, it faces right over here is Lake Oswego. So you're kind of on the other side of it um, all the way down into Milwaukee 
Milwaukee's an area that we see a lot of clients because you know you can stretch the budget there, get into a nicer place, and be close to all the stuff. But Selwood, Moreland, uh, Milwaukee Ave, you know, all this along here, super fun. A lot of shops and restaurants down here. Uh, but that is really a breakdown of that whole northeast, south, southeast section. And if you're looking and you're seeing a lot more affordable homes, cheap homes, uh, especially the farther we go out, you know, to the east in some of these areas, just got to, you know, be careful in some of those areas. Again, this is why you need to schedule calls with us so we can go over these areas in general. But uh, they're areas that are, you know, in development now, we'll just say for lack of a better term. Anyways. Now we'll pop back out to the main map and get back after some of these sections. All right, so next up, what I want to do is I'm going to talk about some of these, you know, top areas to live according to niche.com. I'm not going to put them in any ranking, but when you look at their top rankings, these are the areas that are constantly being brought up. A few of these you probably haven't heard of. Right out of the gate, I'm going to talk about uh, Vancouver, Washington here, because one of the areas that gets brought up in the Portland Metro is Camas, Washington. It's over here. It's actually, uh, you know, quite a bit to the east here. And one thing that I didn't mention is if you are going to be living in Vancouver uh, and coming down into Portland or even vice versa, if you need to get up into Vancouver from Portland, this is that 205. This is another bridge across the river, considerably less traffic. The I-5 right here bottlenecks down uh, and it's the majority of the traffic. So a lot of times if, if you can get over to here, that 205 across the river is going to be a heck of a lot quicker. And then you're going to come right over here, Camas, Washington. If you haven't seen it yet, go after this video, go to our channel. We did a full vlog tour on it uh, just recently, and we really break it down. It is super popular. Again, you're reading it online, some of the top school districts that you'll find in the Portland metro. So basically, even Vancouver, all this area is considered the Portland metro. And we're starting to see you know prices in this area really skyrocket so it is good um, for those that are buying there you know their equity is growing going up quickly but for the people looking to get in there it's really starting to grow quickly uh, one of the next areas this is usually uh, in fact it wasn't in the top 10 and a lot of it had to do with schools and where it was at but now the schools are just climbing through the rankings and it's like Pleasantville so this is Happy Valley I had never heard of it before I moved to Portland uh, we went out and started doing vlogs out there, and I'll never forget the first time I went out there. You know, you're driving, and it looks all flat right here, but you're actually heading up in the mountains, and then you, like, drop down. And when you drop down in here, you can see, which it's way over here, Mount Hood is in the backdrop. You have these big mountains, old-growth trees. It is really pretty. I come from North Idaho, just south of the Canadian border, so it really reminded me of that. Once you get into Happy Valley, it is just Pleasantville. Super peaceful, quiet, incredible top neighborhoods, and you're really going to stretch that budget. So this is an area where you can get, you know, way more home for your buck. You got the great schools. You got a lot really cool areas down there with uh, a bunch of food, you know, cartel type stuff, food cartel, the food trucks. Um, there's a food cartel in, in Beaverton. So that's what made me say that. But uh, there, there's just a lot going on in Happy Valley, and it's really starting to expand. There's a lot of new uh, neighborhoods, a lot of new construction. So a lot of opportunity over here. But as you can see, you know, it really puts you a long way from Portland. Or if you're going to be working over on the west side, Intel, you know, Nike, something like that, this drive is going to be brutal because, you know, most likely you're going to kind of have to come south from Milwaukee. But most, you know, you're going to be coming in and taking one of these major bridges across Portland to get in. So this is, you know, southeast Portland. Milwaukee, um, you got some top areas right down in this where, where you can come and, and cross the bridge right here, but it's going to take you quite a bit of time to get over to the west side. This is why I highly stress out. You got to schedule a call and a consultation with our team. We are the number one relocation team here in, in Portland. So right here's our contact information. It's also down in the description below. So make sure you write it down, get our email or a number so you can text us or email us. And we will book a private Zoom call with you, go over these areas and help you find your dream spot to buy a house. So this is what we've done with 200 plus clients. Don't forget to schedule your call today. So next up on the list, when you look at any kind of rankings, you're going to see kind of a, a mix of these areas over on the west side. And I've circled it already. In fact, I'll get rid of some of these markings here. Beaverton, Oregon. Now, this is something that I really want to go into depth because everybody sees Beaverton and that's where they kind of lock in. Oh, I'm going to move to Beaverton. And we hone in right here on the center. 
Not a lot of people are living there. This whole section around here is really old. There's not a lot of new construction. Uh, in fact, a lot of these areas in here are really old homes from like 60s, 70s. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. If you want kind of that quarter acre, third acre lot, split level home, older style, that's where you're looking. But the majority of our clients come in here, they're looking more in this area over here. So this is South Beaverton. This road right here, which is Shoals Ferry, separates Tigard and Beaverton. This is gonna be different school districts too. So you're gonna be into the Tigard uh, school districts over here, and these you'll be into the Beaverton. So um, right now you have in uh, South Beaverton, the newest high school for this area. And it is right here on the corner. This is Mountainside High School. It is huge, massive, gorgeous, pretty, amazing, right? You've got, um, again, you guys are reading this. I can't steer in any way, but you see it on niche.com, Redfin, school rankings. So a lot of the elementaries, middle schools, everything right in here, they're, they're, they're very highly rated. And what happened was this is an urban growth boundary. So, you know, I, and this is rough, it's not exact, but this is all farm country. When you come out this way, it is pumpkin patches, it is, you know, farms, it is agriculture, it is gorgeous out this way. And in Oregon, in, in, Be in Portland, they have an urban growth boundary, which is voted on every 10 years. So they can't just go sprawling out and build wherever they want. That's what makes this city so unique. Every 10 years, this border gets expanded a little bit and it can be just little pockets. So <clears throat> one of the pockets that just uh, was cleared not too long ago was in this section. So if you have Shoals Ferry here, this right here, Roy Rogers Road, which goes right down into Sherwood, the brand new high school and the biggest high school in the state of Oregon is right there in Sherwood. Now you've got all farm country over here, but this is all being developed. <clears throat> you got this whole section up here, thousands of homes. You've got more sections going right along uh, Roy Rogers. Again, this is all farm country. You look out this way and you're basically in the middle of nowhere. There's pumpkin patches. Like I keep saying, you know, there's go picket stands where you go get strawberries and apples and you name it. It's really cool. Uh, you got the Twalton River out there too, or the, yeah, the Twalton River. And this section here is where a lot of our clients are looking because it's all brand new. They have what's called Progress Ridge uh, right here. Shop, 50 different shops, restaurants, bars. Uh, they got movie theaters, Ace Hardwares. They got vet clinics, you name it. They're building another one over here. So if you're living in this section, you have everything you need uh, basically within walking distance. So you got parks galore every quarter mile in here. So again, the reason I stress that is because everybody looks at Beaverton on the map, but that's not typically where anybody is living or moving to. It's all really gonna be down in this area. Again, when you reach out to us and schedule that call, this is what we do. We, we really break it down to streets, to roads, to individual areas to, to help you best. So the next one on the list, I kind of cut it off and I shouldn't have. We have Hillsboro. This is called the Silicon Forest. So a lot of the jobs, a lot of the tech companies, everything is headed out this way because it was the most space to build. So Again, some of these roads, this is the way I used to have to drive uh, when I first moved to Portland, was these back roads. So you take these pretty roads, farm country, and I would get into Hillsboro area to work, and my first brokerage is in that way too. It's just expanding. All this is growing, all new construction. Uh, Reed's Crossing, which is probably one of the, it's not truly master plan community, but it's probably one of the top communities in all of the Portland metro is out this way, thousands and thousands of homes. We did a video on that as well. Uh, but there's a lot of tech and jobs coming out here. Right in the center, you have a LOA because right here you've got Nike. And then right in this area, you got Intel. So with Hillsboro, building thousands and thousands of new homes means a ton of new schools, new shops. They've got top golf courses out that way. It's really a nice area. And when you live in Hillsboro right here, you're also a quick shot right up to Highway 26 so that you can zip to downtown or out west. My favorite, to go to the coast, baby. Go hit the ocean in about an hour and a half. So Hillsboro kind of puts you out there. Again, if you're going to be working up in North Portland or you know across the, the bridges or something, that's going to be quite the drive uh, to get out there. They do have um, out in Hillsboro and Beaverton, they got Max stations. So the Max uh, can run you all the way to downtown and it comes all the way out to Hillsboro. So 
you do have some public transportation uh, and a couple stations out here. So sometimes we'll just drive up park and I'll take the kiddos and we'll take it because it's really fun. They like it and go hit a soccer game or just go downtown or whatever. But you do have the Mac station out there. So Beaverton, Hillsboro, and Tigard's one that uh, is not on a lot of the list, but you know, again, the Tiger schools. Plus, if you look, now look at how close, and with the 99, you know how quickly you, you can zip right in. Again, this I-5 can get um, backed up quite a bit, you know, sometimes with traffic. The 99 now seems to be getting busier. Uh, but an area that everybody talks about and is on most of the list is Sherwood. Again, you can see how far out to the southwest you have to go to get to it. But now you're talking about the biggest high school in the entire state of Oregon. It is crazy. When you see it, you just almost don't believe it. So really, really top-end schools, super small-town community feeling. When you're in Sherwood, I mean, you have these tiny little streets and a couple different restaurants. You're going to know everybody quickly, especially you guys coming in. I know how it feels. You'll start meeting people in the community very quickly, and you're going to feel like you're part of the community. So that is something that we hear all the time from our clients. It's just peaceful down there. You're in the farm fields and you have incredible top end schools and a lot of different neighborhoods going on. Now, if we move in, uh, we will talk about some of the top areas again to live ranking wise. Westland, Oregon is one that keeps hitting uh, top of the charts. Uh, in fact, I'll just put it with, not with, but next to, there's Lake Oswego. This usually gets ranked as the number one spot to live in Portland, Oregon because of its schools, right? It's going to cost you the most to live there. When you look at median home prices, it's going to be through the roof, but a lot of it has to do with the houses that are for sale on the lake. If you get a house on the lake, you're easily in the multi-million dollar range, but you get what you pay for. It is baller there. That's where all the athletes and stuff, a lot of them live there, but a lot of them also live here in West Lynn because you're super close to, to downtown to all the facilities and you get to stretch that budget. I just looked online because I'm a big sports guy, basketball especially, I get young kids playing hoops. West Lynn has one of the top high school basketball programs in the entire country. So ranked up there with the Texases, the Californias, you name it, they got one of the top ones. Our preferred lender, the money guy on this channel, Addy, he'll be pumped to hear about that. Um, sports are kind of life in there. Again, tight knit community, everybody knows each other, very pretty. You get the river and the park there for swimming top schools. We know that area like the back of our hand too, especially due to Addy. So again, another important reason why you reach out to us. Contact information is right there. I'm telling you right now, if you're moving here, this is exactly what you want because we're just going to help you with everything it takes to move here, finding that house. You just got to worry about getting here. So make sure you're copying that info. Lake Oswego, Oregon. I'll take a little bit more time on that because um, it's one that everybody is talking about. So when you look at Lake O, you've got a couple different spots. Obviously, the closer you get right down here to this highway and uh, the main road that comes in, A Street, this is where all your shops and everything is right downtown here. Uh, and then there's not a lot going on there. They can't build anywhere in Lake Oswego. So a lot of the, the houses can come out this way. And there's different sections as well, uh, but they all feed into the Lake Oswego School District. So if you're looking to get into Lake O and in those school districts, you can come out a little bit farther out here um, to, to reach into those. Don't get too far, but some of these areas are going to be able to reach into the Lake O schools. You've also got Tryon State Park right here. It is hundreds of miles of, of like paved or gravel trails, and there's a bunch of different entrances and, and trails to get in. It is gorgeous. So now you're kind of living in this top area, Plus, you have some of the best hiking that you can possibly find. And with, within just a couple miles of this area here, there's like 25 different trailheads. Uh, you know, it's just really, really crazy. So if you like that nature, walking around, hiking, that's it. Um, that's going to be the spot right here is this whole Lake O area. So now, just like I promised, I've got you a heat index map. So this really describes, you know, some of the most expensive areas and least expensive. So the darker that the shade gets of the pink, maroon, purple, whatever you want to call it, that is where it is more expensive to live. Um, so real quick, again, if you haven't yet, go ahead and pin me that comment down below where you're moving from. We are interested in seeing where everybody's coming from. Uh, but here's here's what we got to know. You got the whole, you know, this is all of, of Portland here. So it's kind of like your, your downtown area. But I just want to break it into some of the suburbs. 
We talked about it here. So right here, this is your Highway 26. Um, this is like that 217 that comes around. And then you have, here's Tigard. So you've got um, the Shoals Ferry and stuff here. So there's Beaverton, Aloha. You can see uh, the Beaverton areas, still one of the more affordable for even that new construction all the way down into here. Um, some of the Tigard area, you're gonna pay a little bit more. This is called Bull Mountain. You're up in the hills. It's way bigger homes. It's definitely more spendy. You get a lot of views. So right here is, is a great area for bang for your buck. You can see it gets even more expensive. This is that area that's right up on the hill there. Um, Aloha is definitely the most affordable area on the west side. It sandwiches right in between Hillsboro and Beaverton, which you can see are about the same uh, cost for houses right here. Uh, but Aloha is right in the middle. It's an older neighborhood, older, you know, there's some uh, you know, just whatever, just standard homes, but you're going to see kind of like what I was talking about in that, that original part of Beaverton is what Aloha is. So if you really want that area and got to stretch your budget, Cedar Hill or Aloha is where it's at. Now I said Cedar Hill, Cedar Hill, Cedar Mill, these all funnel into Sunset High School, which is one of the top schools, you know, everybody wants to get into. And Bethany, you can see how dark and dark and dark these are areas um, that people are really, uh, you know, getting into. You got to stretch that budget, but schools are definitely going to be some of the top ranked in the Portland Metro. And you're that quick drive right into downtown Portland. And these areas, everything is new. Everything's expanding. All the roads, all the shops, all the restaurants. You have everything you need out there. You're a quick drive out to the coast. But what people love is a lot of our Intel workers and our Nike workers are choosing th these areas because you just drop right down into work every day to Intel or to Nike. So that's where a lot of people are moving, especially the Intels, the Nikes. They're going to be, you know, uh, looking up in this Bethany or Cedar Mill area, or they're going to be, you know, going to the, the Tigers, the Beavertons, something like that. Um, as you can see that we kind of covered the West side and this heat map does show Sherwood is more expensive. I know that if you looked at the exact same size house, um, in, you know, Sherwood versus, you know, Beaverton, I think you would probably, maybe it's about the same, maybe Sherwood's a little bit more now, but usually you can get quite a bit more house, uh, in Sherwood, but it really caught fire lately. Again, you know, when you reach out to us, we talk about these areas, people start explaining what they like, what they don't like. And this was an area that we're like, you're going to love it. This is what you're talking about. So a lot of people didn't know about Sherwood and that's why the, the kind of craze went there. And then obviously the new high school and stuff, and it made it a little bit more expensive. Uh, Tualatin, same thing. Other than Tualatin, um, the I-5 actually comes on the border of Tualatin. So it's nice because you it's the quickest to get onto I-5 if you want to head south or into downtown. A lot of older neighborhoods in Tualatin as well. They got the Tualatin Country Club, which is really cool in that area. Uh, a lot of established parks and restaurants, bars. So Tualatin's a good area. And as you can see here, here's your Westland. Uh, and this is, it's not saying it, but this is Lake O, Lake Oswego right there. So definitely one of the more expensive. I know for a fact though, you know, Westland, you're going to be able to stretch your budget a heck of a lot more than Lake O. And they have schools that rival Lake Oswego. You're right south of Lake Oswego. So you get to, you know, use all its amenities and stuff. And that's why a lot of people are, are choosing the Westland area. Um, now, if we head up, you'll notice Happy Valley again. Um, Sometimes when they're showing this is because, you know, when you look at a lot of these neighborhoods over here, some of these houses are your older ones, right? Your three ones, two ones, three twos. And when you go out to Happy Valley, there's a lot of like four bed, five, six bedroom homes. So a lot of these houses are just way, way, way bigger. And the prices are a little bit higher because of that. But when you look at a four or five bedroom house or a brand new DR Horton home over in this area versus you know, getting into a three, four or five bedroom house in Lake Oswego, you're going to be considerably cheaper. And that's why anybody who can work out to that east side, live on the east side, they are happily choosing Happy Valley and they love it. Uh, they're definitely raving about Happy Valley and it's one of my sneaky best areas. You can see up here, Camas is showing a shade lighter than a lot of these. Although I do know, you know, Camas is starting to really get expensive up there. The Camas schools, Camas High School, all that are really top, top rated. So um, that's an area that is, is growing probably the fastest and it's probably the most highly desired in Camas. 
I'm not showing it, but if you look on the map uh, after this, and we've done vlog tours in this, you can watch our other videos. There is uh, Ridgefield. That's probably one of the top areas too that people are moving to uh, up north. Stretch the budget, you're gonna be up to the northwest side of, uh, of Vancouver, but you know, it's probably a 25, 30 minute drive to get down into uh, to the, to the Vancouver area. So Ridgefield's the top area. And you can see here now, if I clear this, um, you know, just some of these areas out here and where you're gonna stretch that budget. But again, that's why I like to bring this heat map up and explain it because if you just look at it yourself, you're like, well, that's one of the most expensive places. I'm out of there. It's really not because of what I told you, you know, it's a lot of bigger homes. You're gonna be able to stretch the budget there way more than you will inside of here. So again, we go over every single one of these areas with you. When you start telling us what you like and what you don't like, we will start pinpointing areas I didn't even talk about today and down to the individual street, right? We've helped hundreds and hundreds of clients do this. Uh, so that is one thing that you need to know. And now is the time to take that number and that email, copy it down. Make sure you book your appointment with us today. And now watch this video. Are you wondering if it's still safe to live in Portland, Oregon after, well, you know what happened here. Go ahead and watch this video. We do a deep dive into that.